In this segment, I'm going to look a little bit more closely at the difference between Genomi Jan format and Genomi Jeff format. And I think to get started doing that, what I'll do is I'll start a new window. And I talked about this a little bit in the quick start guide, but I'd like to look a little bit more closely at it. And in general terms, digitizer software is the default format is the Genomi.jan format. And just as an example, if I was to go ahead and create a circle using the circle tool, you would see that if I look closely, my circle is filled in with thread. Now, I didn't make the, the stitches, I simply drew a circle. So I made an object and that object was a circle and I could make any shape object I want using this tool here. So for example, if I zoom out a little bit, draw a shape, I simply draw that shape and when I hit enter, fills it in with thread. And I can see in my object list here, there's my circle. That was the tool I used to make it with. It's a weave fill and it's 400 stitches. And here's my other shape that I made. And that was the tool I used to make it with. And it's a parallel weave fill. And it's 903 stitches. So that's how I can see I've made two objects in this embroidery design. And of course, we get to control the object details. So for example, if I select an object and use this tool to ask for object details, we can set all sorts of information about this object. For example, this is the fill stitch tab. And right now it's set to be a weave fill. And these are the settings, the stitch spacing and the stitch length for my weave fill. If I wanted to change it to be, for example, an embossed fill, or why don't we go with cross stitch fill. Now I can set things like the number of stitches per inch, the number of threads, um, whether it's a full cross or an up crate cross, that sort of thing. Now when I say OK, it changes the stitching and that you can see that here in my resequence tab. It's changed the appearance of it, it's changed the stitch type, changed the number of stitches. And we can do that because it's object based embroidery. And when I save a design, I would save it as a Jan file because that will remember all of these objects that I make. So for example, if I choose the satin line, and put in a couple of points and hit enter and take a good close look at my satin line there you can see that my satin line has a satin stitch top stitch and it has an edge run to the underneath of it its underlay and if I select that satin line and ask for its properties I can see that it's set for a width of two millimeters and the underlay was like I said that edge run now just as an example if I make a change so let's change the width from two millimeters to four say okay and the software automatically changed the underlay type to match the new object that I made. And you can see clearly here that I have a design that I've created and it has one, two, three objects. Now, if I was to save this design file, save as, and I've got a folder on my desktop called training, so I'm just gonna save it in there and we're gonna call it shapes. So I'll type that in, shapes and I'm saving it as a Jan file. And that means I would have saved all of the objects and the object information with that Jan file. Now when you want to stitch a design out, we don't sew the Jan file, we sew a Jeff file. And so if I was to choose to write this design onto my card, it would be saved as a Jeff file. And it would be the same if I said file and save as and instead of saving it as Jan, if I choose Jeff, it'll save it as shapes.jeff in the same location in the training folder. So now I've made two copies of this design. One of them was the Jan file, and one of them's the Jeff. Now, a Jeff file does not include object information. It only includes stitches. But Digitizer has the ability to convert stitches into objects. And that's really great. Not so much for the designs that you make, but for example, if your friend sends you a design or you purchase a design and you'd like to go in and make edits to that design, you can make edits to existing stitch designs because Digitizer will make objects from the stitches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this design, shapes in general. And for example, if I say open, 
and I look under training and if I look see right now it's set for Jeff I'm gonna choose Jan and there's my original shapes dot Jan and if I open that up the design is exactly as I created it one two three objects and they appear more or less what I expect now if I close the window and I say open but this time instead of opening up a Jan I choose to open up the Jeff and I have the same design shapes dot Jeff I'm gonna say open to that now at first appearance the design seems to be the same design however when I look at the object list I can see that there's a lot more than three objects now and that's because digitizer has created new objects based upon my stitches and this is a great thing the ability the fact that I can come in and digitizer and select this object and make it larger and it generates all new stitches for my object is one of the really great things about digitizer but the reason I like to sort of really press on this point is that we do yes we have the ability to edit this design that was based on stitches but we don't have uh, the same editing capabilities as we do with the original Jan so where this is really important is when you make digitized designs you need to remember to save it as a Jan file because you can always open your Jan file to make edits and then create a new Jeff file so what you don't want to do is to go ahead and spend a bunch of time digitizing something and only save it as a Jeff and not save it as a Jan. Because when you go to open your Jeff, you'll find that there will be a whole bunch of objects that weren't the ones that you created. Now, just as an example, let's just look at this little satin line. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to select everything up top here and hit delete. We'll just look at the objects that were from this one satin line. I made the satin line. But if I look closely here, the software has made an object. See, there's the edge run underlay, and the software created an object for it. Then, maybe if I use Visualizer turned off. So the first object is the edge run underlay. The next object was the zigzag underlay. And the next object is just this little line that kind of walks back down the center to the beginning. Then we have, whoops. Then we have the satin column, which shows up on top. And then the very last thing are the stitches for the tie-off and the tie-in. Why don't I try and pull these apart so we can see. So there's the first object. There's the second object. Whoops, I didn't want to open up the menu. There's my third object. Then the satin line, the, sat, the actual satin column. Whoops. And then the very last object is still the tie-off and the tie-in, the, the, the stitches that were created to lock the embroidery at the end. And so you can see that it created five different objects where there should have been one. Now, like I said, this is a really actually a great thing because if you do purchase a design and you'd like to resize it, Digitizer can do that. But the reason I like to come back to this point over and over again is I see so often people digitizing, saving the design as a Jeff and forgetting to make the Jan, and this is the difference. You end up with a bunch of objects. Now, yeah, I can resize these objects and it'll process new stitches. I could even go into the object details and add things. Like, for example, if I wanted to change, I could add additional underlays to this design. I'll add a, a double zigzag to it. So you see, I have the ability to make changes to the design, um, but they're not the original objects. And I always like to come back to that. Your Jan file are your original objects. So I close this Jeff file. Don't save the changes. Say open. Go back to the Jan format. So Jan is your digitizer object file. And you should always save the designs that you create in digitizer. You can create a Jeff from your Jan at any time. Just writing it onto a card is the same as making a Jeff. And if you want to email it to somebody else, you can go File, Save As, Save as a save a Jeff on your desktop. But really, all you need to do is save the Jan file because you can always open up your Jan and write it onto your card as a Jeff at any time.
So that's a little bit more in-depth look at the difference between Genomi Jan format, which is your object-based format, and Genomi Jeff file, Jeff format, which is your stitch-based format.